I'm Bailey. I'm part of the design and education team here at Mako, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to do this cute little cheesecloth inspiration mummy. Alright, so first we're going to start out with the SC35, which is gray hair. And I'm using a soft band brush. And we're just going to apply two coats of this directly to the tile. Fully loading that brush. All right, so this first coat's gonna dry fairly fast. All right, so when the shine is off of that first coat, you can go ahead and apply your second coat. And I like to go the opposite direction from how I went the first time. So we're gonna switch this guy. I like to hold my tiles. Uh, one of my favorite things about stroke and coat is that the color while it's wet like this is pretty close to what you're going to see after it's been fired. So that's nice to be able to know what you're getting into. Now before this dries, I'm actually going to go ahead and take my strips of cheesecloth. So earlier I just cut a couple little strips down out of a larger sheet. What you want to do here is kind of crisscross your bits of cheesecloth across your tile. It doesn't have to be pretty. And in fact, the least pretty it is, the better you're off you probably are. So my goal when I lay this out is I want to have a slightly larger gap, a little further up than halfway in the tile, and that's where the eyes are going to go. So I'm just going to start laying down. So the nice thing about it being still wet is you can kind of touch this down a little bit and it'll stay. Strips are really long. So you can see I'm starting to overlap eh, right about here with this one. A smaller guy up a little higher onto the other side. Just kind of overlap this one over here. So I've got that larger gap right in this area. Now we can kind of fill in the bottom a little more. Another nice thing about stroke and coat is you get some really awesome coverage out of it. So even though I only did two coats of the gray, typically we say three coats is gonna give you solid coverage, but because we're doing so many layers, two coats right now will do just fine. And then I need a little bit more up here because I got a little empty area. So I'm just going to touch this guy up in that edge. All right, so give the little cheesecloth pieces a bit more of a press down. And now what I'm going to do is with my leftover glaze, I'm going to take a little bit of water on my brush just to thin it out slightly because I find it'll help get down in all the fibers there. Mix that in. Now 
And then from here, just starting at the top or the bottom, wherever you want to, you want to kind of hold down the pieces. And I'm kind of squishing down the glaze more so than just dragging it straight across. because I want to get down in between all those little bits. So the reason I'm using the same color again on this is because it kind of acts like a seal. So it'll seal off all those little fibers. So when we put the next color on top, you'll have a crisper image when we pull away all the fibers. And again, we're just kind of patting as we go. Not really any rhyme or reason as to which direction I'm glazing with my brush. Just trying to work it all in there. A little bit more water to kind of help thin it down a little. All right, so I've pretty much got this all covered, so I'm just looking to see if there's any big areas that I may have missed. That one I need to put a little bit more on there because it's just a little too much fiber showing. Maybe a little more over there. All right, now we just let this guy dry a little bit and then we can go on to our next color. All right, so there's still just a little bit of damp in there, but that's not bad. That's not gonna hurt anything. I'm going to move on with the next color that we're going to be using, which is this guy right here, SC46 Rawhide. And I'm just going to go right on the same plate. All right. And we're going to load this brush back up again. Again, still just using that same fan brush. Nice and loaded. All right, so with this one, now you're gonna go over the whole thing except for this little gap that you've left right where the eyes are gonna be. So, doesn't need to be perfect. You want it to look a little sloppy, because it's a mummy. You can probably do this project on clay as well. The glaze isn't going to dry quite as fast if you do it directly on wet clay. You'll want it to be uh, at least leather hard, if not bone dry. If you do wet clay, you might get some cool impressions with the uh, cloth here and some more textural elements that are, we're just doing it on a bisque tile like this one. All right, that's pretty good coverage. Now we're gonna let that one dry and then do a second layer. Let it dry a little bit. Now we're gonna put a second coat over the top.
Nothing fancy, just laying it over the top of the cheesecloth, avoiding the little eye space. And then again, guess what the next step is? We let it dry slightly. All right, so this time I didn't completely dry it. There's still a decent amount of shine on there. Just a little bit to dry. Reason for this being, now we're going to take off the little pieces of cheesecloth. And if it's completely dry, it's gonna flake off and you're not gonna get the texture that you want. So, now is the fun part. And some of the areas where they overlap are gonna be wetter than others, and that's totally okay. Again, we don't want perfection. There is no such thing. So I'm doing a slow pull while not ripping a band-aid off. Goal for that is because you want some of that texture that you can see. If you just peel it straight off, you might ruin that texture. This is a little bit of a messier project, so don't be afraid to get your hands dirty with it. And the little guy off the corner. All right, so we've got all of our cheesecloth peeled off there. You can see that. And now we're gonna let it dry just a little bit more because I've got some areas in here that are quite a bit wetter than others right up in this area. And we want that texture to be uh, stiffened up a little bit. Now that we've got that dryer, you can see that we still have the visual texture happening and an actual texture if you feel it. So what we're going to do is with the exact same fan brush that we just used, we're actually going to do a little bit of dry brushing. So if you've still got color on there, you're going to take it over to a paper towel and wipe it off so that there's minimal stuff left. That should be just fine. Now what you're going to do is very gently rub the bristles over the top of those raised areas. And so when you're dry brushing, the key is to not put a ton on and just try to slap it all in one go. You wanna do a few different uh, rounds of paint layer. So you can see that it's starting to brighten up and not just be all gray anymore. This just brings out that fun texture from the cheesecloth. And this part up here looks pretty good, so I'm just gonna leave those guys alone. It was really just this area where a lot of overlap was happening that I wanted to just kind of bring out a little more. So you'll sometimes notice that there's little bits left behind by the cheesecloth. Don't have to worry about them. Don't have to try to dig them out because they'll just burn out in the kiln. All right, so the cheesecloth part is done. Now we get to move on to the eyes. Starting off with SC15, this is Tuxedo. And this time I'm using a script liner brush. So again, loading up those brush bristles. And so now we're just gonna go in here and you could do this part before you take off the cheesecloth or after, no right or wrong way here. Just however you wanna go. And we're just gonna go in and block out this area. I'm only gonna do two coats of black in this because it's pretty dark anyway, so the coverage is gonna be pretty nice. If you wanna get fancy, after you've gotten a bit of that glaze off, you can run it along some of the texture up there. 
kind of like we just did with that dry brushing to bring out some more of the texture. Makes him look a little grimier. Alright, so we'll let that one dry real fast. And back in with another coat. All right, the second coat's gonna take just a little bit longer to dry than the first coat did. So once we've lost the shine, then we can move on to the next part of the eyes. All right, so we're done with the blacks. So we're gonna wash out that brush. And for the eyeballs, we're going to start with white, which is SC16 Cottontail. So the cool thing about stroking coats is that you can layer light colored stroking coats over dark colored stroking coats, and they're still gonna show up. out. And load up your brush again. All right, so if we're doing eyeballs, you can put just a whole circle into the black area here. What I like to do though is kind of pretend that it's been hidden a bit. So I like to cover kind of the top and bottom of the eyeballs. He's got two different sized eyes because he's a little crazy. So with the white over the black, I am going to do three coats because um, that will help with the coverage since you've got the darker color beneath it. You can see that it's kind of see-through right now, but that's just the first coat. All right, first coat is dry and has lost its shine. I'm loading that back up again. Going back in for the second coat. Don't be afraid to reload your brushes. All right, that's layer number two, let it dry. All right, now we're on to the green of the eyeballs. We're using SC7, which is Leap and Lizard. And you're gonna do the same thing that you just did for the white of the eyeballs, but we're gonna go in slightly and make it a little smaller. A little bit of that white space showing. Trying to follow the curvature of the whites of the eyes. Alright, that's coat number one. Let it dry. Alright, coat number two of Leap and Lizards. And I'm only going to do two coats of this one because I want it to be a little see-through. Make it a little ghostly. Let it dry. All right, so we're washing our brush out and we're gonna go back to the black, the tuxedo. I've already got plenty on my plate here, so I don't need any more. Fully load the brush. All right, so now you can kind of play around a little bit with where you want the pupils to go. You can make them look even crazier if you want. I'm just going to do a couple little round black dots. All right, first coat, let it dry. 
And on to the second coat. And again, the black's pretty opaque, so we can probably just get away with two coats here. All right, and then for this last step, you don't have to let it dry in between this. I'm just gonna take the back end of your brush here, dip it into the white, and now we're just gonna plop on a couple little dots of eye shine. Marietta. There we have it. Sweet. And then once it gets fired, it'll look like this guy. All right, so here's our final product with our mummy. Uh, if you would like to do any other projects, we have a ton of them on our website. If you go to the projects tab, there's a ton in there to choose from. If you decide to make this, uh, we'd love to see your results and what you did with them. You can tag us. Uh, and as always, make it Mako.